the gut is hugely important in our health and well-being throughout our lives, but nowhere is it as important as in those first three years of our life when so many things like our immune system and our organ links with the gut and so on are set up and they're established in those first three years. But it even comes into play before that in terms of fertility and preconception. And so I want to briefly introduce you to the idea of the preconception and fertility gut and go through the first three years in terms of the birth and breast milk and foods and introduction, in fact, of the first foods and why it's important. As part one of a series that I want to do on the fertility through to the first three, four, five years of our life. And it is critically important in those years. And when it comes to preconception and fertility, what we now know is the gut and our diet and our lifestyle have a huge role to play in it. Unfortunately, most people don't get this information. It's well established in the scientific literature through thousands of scientific studies on cells, mice and humans and so on. It all shows that link between the gut and fertility and nutrition, lifestyle and fertility. And I'll sum it up very briefly. I'll go through a lot more in another video. And we've got all these ones I've listed in green are factors that lead to an increase in fertility and um, healthy preconception. And that is calm in our lives, probiotics, physical activity, healthy foods, extra nutrition, including supplements. And that includes specifically things that are antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, fiber, and anything that is going to feed the gut microbiome. And obviously, you know about fruit, nuts, seeds, you've seen all my, my other videos on those. So they're the things that will actually increase, they will increase the likelihood of becoming pregnant. So first step. Down below, we've got the factors that actually have a negative role and a negative impact on fertility, and that includes stress, uh, antibiotics. Most people don't understand the importance of stress, but stress is a huge player in infertility. Um, antibiotics, pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, ph uh, antibiotics are a huge role in terms of disturbing the gut, pharmaceuticals as well, alcohol and drugs, ultra-processed foods I should put in, um, and then you've got... Uh, uh, toxic chemicals, including cosmetics, and these are the things that are what we call xenoestrogens or foreign hormones, the plastics and the things that you get in cosmetics and personal care products, which you'll, you can see on the other material I've got. And of course, inactivity. And what is important here is to understand that all these affect the mother and the father's gut. All these affect them in a positive way. So activity is one of the single best ways that you can actually improve your gut microbiome. Bringing calm, relaxation into your life is another great way of affecting your gut microbiome. It's not just about probiotics and fiber, which I'm really big on, but it's about that whole, whole human lifestyle, diet, environment approach. So you might be doing everything, but if you're being exposed to toxic chemicals, which are then causing poisoning the gut microbiome and altering your xeno hormones in your body, then it's not going to work. So we, what we want to do is focus on these. Then we go to the birth. And when, uh, through a natural birth, you've got the mother's microbiome. Now, most people aren't aware, but the most recent studies are showing that babies are actually, or I should say in utero, the fetus is exposed to microbes from the mother. And so it already starts to pick up some of the mother's microbiome. And then there is a what's called a placental microbiome. And when the baby is born, it picks up the uteral micro microbiome, the microbiome of the uterus and microbiome then of the mother's skin. So all the way through, even before birth, but all the way through the birthing process, it picks up the mother's microbiome from the placenta and the skin primarily. And the, the, the fondling, the cuddling and all that the baby is constantly then picking up the microbiome and that's a microbiome that will go on the baby's skin and of course into the gut. So that's the first stage. Now, when we've got a cesarean birth, they pick up the microbiome from the skin of the mothers, at least we hope they do, and then also from the hospital. And they're missing out on a big portion of that coming direct or directly from the mother. And so we see very different microbiomes from a cesarean birth to a natural birth. There is no doubt the difference of them. And then we go on to the next stage, which is breast milk and artificial formulas, infant formulas and so on. And uh, I remember giving a talk on this to the 
uh, Breastfeeding Association about 20 years ago and talking about toxins and the gut microbiome and, and breastfeeding. So this one, this one I'm, I'm passionate about and I just think it's so important. And in human milk, in human breast milk, there are thousands of chemicals and there is no way known in, in, uh, at this period in our lives that infant formula or anything is going to mimic or come close to mother's milk, nothing. And it has all these chemicals and has all these nutrients that have uh, just amazing properties for the infant and the gut microbiome. But first of all, it's anti-inflammatory. Now, inflammation is the cornerstone of all illness, as is oxidation. And, and, and basically, mother's milk is about 20, and has 20 times more antioxidants than cow's milk, goat's milk, other forms or other animals' milk. So it's really rich in anti-inflammatory and anti antioxidant agents, which is protecting the gut of the infant straight away. Then it's also got immune modulating chemicals in it. Now, in uh, 2003, I wrote a paper all about allergies and the gut, and how we were finding people who were exposed to huge amounts of dust mites actually didn't have dust mite allergy, but the people who had the lowest levels actually had dust mite allergies. And in those same studies or then we extended it and we found out people who had the highest peanut exposure had the lowest peanut allergies so it wasn't the the material itself the protein that was causing the allergens it was the gut dysbiosis the gut disturbance and so even back then it became very apparent that the gut microbiome has a huge role to play in setting up and developing the immune system for the rest of your life so a healthy immune system in those first months and years of uh, an infant's life are critical for developing a healthy immune system. And with that in mind, it also we also don't just get the development, but we also find that the breast milk contains live white blood cells. Now these, these are literally passed on directly to the infant so that the infant can then start to protect itself straight away. So it's getting all those protective mechanisms, which they don't get in infant formula. Infant formula cannot and won't be able to for a long, long time to be able to duplicate your milk. And then another important aspect is that the human milk, the breast milk, is microbial balancing. And what I mean by that is the fact that it, there's something like a third of the ingredients, a third of the ingredients in human milk aren't designed for the baby, they're designed for the microbes in the gut. Wow! That must mean something, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And the infant formula are starting to look at that. They're put, putting in some prebiotics and some probiotics, but they again, won't be able to duplicate it. A third, get this, a third of mother's milk is designed not for the baby, not to feed the baby, not to make it big and fat like a cow, but to actually develop the gut microbiome. And it's got something like 200 oligosaccharides, which are kind of like the fiber. You, you consider them as a, as a fiber. So they've got 200, 200 of these different oligosaccharides and literally 100 to 1,000 times more than you would get in cow's milk or in infant formula. So the message is it's designed literally to feed the, 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 pro, the, feed the probiotics that are in the baby's gut. Now, of course, where do they come from? We'll get to that in a moment. But the gut, the uh, human milk also has other things like uh, lactoferrin. That's only one of them. But it's got other ingredients that kill the nasty bacteria, kill what we call the opportunistic bacteria and the fungi, something like lactoferrin. And that's one of a cocktail it's got. So it's got the things to feed the good ones, like the bifidobacteria and lactobacillus, and it's got stuff to poison the nasty ones. That's how fantastic it is, almost as though it's designed for infants. Bit of sarcasm there. And then on top of that, human milk includes probiotics. So it's got probiotics, it's got prebiotics, the oligosaccharides, and it's got antimicrobials to kill off the nasties. Now, where the probiotics primarily come from, uh, and by, by the way, these are, these are produced in the mammary glands of the mother. And where the probiotics come from are literally, literally the mother. And uh, it's almost uh, like a yogurt that the probiotics in the nipple and in the memory, top of the memory glands are actually starting to ferment it and then the baby gets it. So they get this early dose of mother's milk, human probiotics. Now on top of that, okay, 
when all that happens, essentially it's encouraging the main group of bacteria it encourages is something called bifidobacteria. And these bifidobacter, and the most important one is probably infantis and then breva and bifidum. And these are showing up in different different studies. Um, most of the studies show infantis is, is the main infantis is the main one, and the other two come a little bit lower down below. But it's this bifidobacteria. And this bifidobacteria then has an effect on the immune modulating. And of course, these oligosaccharides have a, a role in the immune modulation as well. So this whole chemistry behind the scenes, and if you tried to put it on uh, paper, it'd just be a mess of lines because it's all interconnected and all interconnected into developing a healthy microbiome so that the baby has a healthy immune system and healthy organ systems and a great communication system. But on top of all those you get from breast milk, they're just so there, there's also hormones that the mother passes on. The mother passes on these hormones according to the day and the time, uh, the, the amount, according to where she is, uh, you know, how long after birth. Infant formulas change very little. Then you've got digestive enzymes to actually help break things down. So uh, one of the problems with milk that I've been telling people about for decades now is the fact that by the time you homogenize and pasteurize milk, you've lost all the enzymes to digest it. So milk from a bottle, from a, a container becomes very hard to digest. Whereas human milk from the mother literally is along, comes along all the nutrients and all the factors in there, the digestive enzymes to break it down and make it easy for the baby. So literally no stress, no inflammation, and as a result, no oxidation on the baby. So we've got digestive enzymes, cholesterol. Oh no, don't tell me the baby's getting cholesterol. Yeah, it's essential for the brain. Cholesterol is essential for the cells, but let's say the nervous system and the brain are the critical part. So the baby needs cholesterol. By the way, so do you. Uh, it's, not, it's not public enemy number one that it's ma been made out to. Cholesterol is an essential ingredient. Hence, why, why would it be in human milk designed over millions or hundreds of millions of years, maybe, to get to the baby? Then you've got things like melatonin, neurotransmitters. And what's interesting, why I put up melatonin as one example of the things that are passed on is the level of melatonin that's passed on varies according to the day, the day, the time, the, all these factors. For example, at night time, the mother is starting to produce melatonin, is going to produce more melatonin, and the baby is going to have the benefits of that melatonin, which is sleep. By the way, melatonin is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and protects all of your cells and all your organs throughout the body. It's a marvelous, a marvelous neurotransmitter. And uh, for some reason, the medical industry tried to pick on it and say it's bad for you. The science on melatonin is phenomenal and it is brilliant. And infants get it with the mother and they get more at nighttime and they get less. In the morning, they get more corticosteroids, cortisol, which is the up and go. And then they get the dopamine. So they literally are getting all of the messages, chemical messages from the mother, which is why they pick up on the behavior of the mother so quickly and lots of factors. But I'll go into that in a lot more depth later on in one of the other videos. So we've got all these changes that are occurring. Now, you don't get that in infant formula and you don't get any of that in processed foods. And the biggest problem we have at the moment is starting to feed babies, infants, processed foods. Human milk is live food. It's a raw food. It's really easily to, easy to digest. And then in the ideal scenario, we introduce new foods to babies. And I've had this discussion with my, my, my daughters and I've talked about how um, the, the best scenario, and they've told me the best scenario, and they at the hospitals they'll tell you, you introduce a little bit of the food. And they're going, introduce a little bit. Is that to just get the infant used to it? No. Introducing a little bit of food, one piece of apple, one piece of a peach, one piece of whatever it is, meat, it's to actually start to build up the microbiome. The microbiome, while you've got the, all this already getting established in the healthy microbiome, the next part of it though is preparing it for the rest of your life. And so the idea is you introduce little bits, very small amounts of food into their diet over the, you know, a, a period of one or two years on and a little bit and it grows and it increases. And every time you feed the baby just a little bit of apple, they start to build an apple microbiome. 
or if you feed them uh, some carrots, a carrot microbiome. If you feed them McDonald's, you, they end up with a, literally a McDonald's microbiome, able to break down McDonald's and work with McDonald's, but not to do, not to be able to get the nutrition out of real foods. Now we find that causes problems later on if they haven't been exposed to, for example, peanuts. So the theory now is you expose infants to peanuts, um, you know, to some period, six months to one and a half years, depending on who you listen to, and that feeds that, feeds the peanut microbiome, and they start to be able to digest it and, and literally handle it all. But if they're not, then, and then they're exposed to peanuts in at 10 or 20 years and their immune system isn't regulated, then guess what? They end up with, yes, some peanut type problem, peanut allergies, which is what I wrote about in 2003. So a little bit of all types of food, healthy foods, sets up the microbiome for a healthy digestive system for the rest of your life. That's how important it is. And we now know that developing this healthy microbiome from here to here doesn't just have a role to play on the healthy microbiome and a healthy immune system, but as a result of those, it plays a role in virtually every single form of chronic illness throughout our life. So what happens in those first couple of years of our lives determines hypertension later in it, or has a factor or a role to play hypertension and heart attack and stroke, even various cancers. It has a role to play in the allergies and the eczema and the autism and diabetes one and diabetes two. And all of this is linked with the gut microbiome from zero or minus zero right through to those first couple of years. That is so important which is why we're gonna be doing a lot more videos on this to go into more depth. And if you've got any questions, please pose some questions to us, or if you would like us to do some more topics related to this, let us know what you would like. Otherwise, subscribe below and share this information, like and share with your friends.